Hi, I'm Nadia Bjorland. And I'm Kyle Lauder. And you're watching our episode of Lip Roll. With Valerie Morehouse. Hey guys, welcome to Lip Roll. I'm your host, Valerie Morehouse. And I'm your co-host, Ella London. Good morning, Ella. Good morning. Who do we have on the show today? Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. So we have my special friend, Kyle Lauder, who is best known for Days of Our Lives. Yay. And he was on Bold and the Beautiful. And he's producing and uh, I think starring in, or just producing, I'll find out later anyway. He won't be upset. Um, Something really (laughs) cool called Ladies of the Lake. If you haven't seen it, it's a really, really cool series. And we have Nadia Bjorlin, who's on Days of our lives. That's right, because um, she'll be joining us today as well she with is. Kyle. I'm really excited about that, getting to meet her. It's going to be a good interview. It's going to be great. Um, really excited. And I just want to remind everyone to make sure that they subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Yes. Um, and of course, Instagram is my all time favorite because it's a super fun channel, the Lip Roll channel. It's liproll.co. Um, and I'm always following them and seeing the pop ups come up. I'm like, ooh, fun. Yay. It's it's easy. Yes. It's fast. Super we love easy it. And fast. So let's get into it. I'm excited. Yeah. Let's take a listen. Let's listen. Right when right when we got married, we're like, oh, we're, you know, we're just going to like take it easy and see what happens right yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> like, whoa, okay. Right. Well, when you're on and the other side of like four, it gets easier, right? It's yeah. just, it's a different. <laughs> you got them out of the way quick. You had I twins. Did. Boom. I went two and done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One, yeah. two and, and done. Then, yeah. yeah. I was pregnant when my first son was like not even six months old. Whoa. That's. So bananas it was but I'm, i mean I'm, so they're like I'm, irish twins yes right okay That's why which I was is very fitting because complain. my husband's from northern ireland so he's Aww. actually irish so they actually are half irish half irish and irish twins yeah uh, is, but it's it's good now when they're getting to the age of where they're like really becoming little people and yeah. not just her husband's like a class a stud muffin he's like tall dark oh. handsome and like <laughs> intimidating <Classy> stud muffin. <laughs> I Tall, so. dark, handsome, and incredibly intimidating. Yeah. That's good. Uh, well, I don't know about intimidating. Two other guys are kind of like, I, get, like I, know, I fancy myself as like a tall, or? like kind of built no. guy, but then you get in front of him, I'm just like, <laughs> hey. He, we know it's so funny. Actually, for a living, he kind of has to be intimidating. And so I, I guess I don't really... To me, See, I'm not venturing on the side of like, he's not mean. It's right, just, but right, like, no, without you. even like his opening presence. his mouth, he's a, yeah, a, a, his a very strong yeah. presence. Yeah. He, uh, yeah so, he so Stephen wise, is he like a, is a, he surpasses? He's, he's bigger than Stephen. That's he's my big. point. He's big. He's a big dude. Yeah. He's, good, well, he's an architect and oh. out here he's a property developer. Oh, I so love yeah. that. That's perfect. Yeah. So right. You want like someone really like, on the ground, like stable. Yeah. He's, you know. He, well, he claims he's never seen me in anything, like acting wise. I know he's like what a liar. A he's, he's lying. Such a liar. Girl, when, you, when you're at work and if he happens to be home, like at one, you know, he's one been PM, stalking you. You yeah, didn't know that. He's well, totally I'm been stalking sure you. He's like, He'll slip up one day and just like talk about something that happened on the show. And you're like, has, How'd you know that? He has looked. Uh, I know he's looked me up on YouTube or something. <laughs> people always lie about that. They're like, no, I, I have no idea. YouTube who you are. terrifies the ever loving shit out of me because yeah. if I Google, I've never done this. But yeah, if I like don't. searched my name in YouTube, no, I'm don't. so fearful about what can come. Just don't even like Google yourself. No, I, I made that mistake Just years ago and I was like, no, never again. <laughs> Never again. Yeah, I was like, I well, when did that photo get taken? Well, I, I <laughs> oh, and you're just like, oh, great. All my world. It's so weird growing up like in the public eye. All your years are all just documented. All of your weird years. Like you're, <laughs> you're like all my, like when I got on days and I thought I was hot shit. I was 19 and I awkward. I remember that. And you're I so back, baby face. You know me since I was 19. You were hot yes. shit. Yes. You look cute. Isn't that you so were, long time? But you look back on that no, and you're I like, know. oh, dear Lord. Yeah. yeah, but we're all entitled to that. We so all make mistakes. So we've known each other for... Uh, 19 years yeah yeah a long time well guys yeah. i'm super excited to have you here so welcome yeah. to lip roll thank, thank, thank you, you. Um, thanks for having so, us so so for our listeners that don't know about you guys um kyle you've been my long time friend right we just about were talking 19 years about yeah. 19 years and Nadia, i've known you through kyle sort yeah. of on the you know Probably on the, for the same amount of time yeah right I met, yeah i met you like literally right in before wow so yeah i met you there's in, a lot of history there there's a lot yeah. to talk yeah, we about and it's crazy it. that we're still 22 years old i know, I know. you see us we're not it's aging. so weird how that happens <laughs> no we oh. met each other when we were 19 right yeah. july of mm-hmm. 2000 
So I want to yeah. ask you guys to, 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 to start this off. What your early, I know a little bit more about you, obviously. Yeah. So we're just going to pre- pretend that I don't know. I don't know anything. That's totally mm-hmm. fine. I'm You're, good at that. I'm going to start with I Nadia. For a living. Nadia, what were your early influences with acting and music? Because you sing as well. And I only know that because Kyle told, <laughs> told me that you sing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I really started off doing more music than acting because I grew up in a very artistic family. My father was a conductor and composer of classical music. Oh, wow. Well, uh, that's so where you I got grew it up from. in a household where that was just commonplace. Amazing. Like people were in and out of the house that were musicians, that were opera singers, classical wow. musicians. I have to interject. It's actually oh. kind of sick. Like they're all <laughs> ridiculously musically talented. Like, so, so, well, did, so did you start singing classical I, music or yes, how did that work? Uh, yeah, well, my earliest... My earliest singing memory would be seven years old and learning to sing the song, The Best Things in Life Are Free. Oh, I love it. That's um, awesome. Yeah, and it, and it really came about, I, I mean, I... Which totally I, isn't I, true. I, I, no, I it's up. true. <laughs> Sometimes. You can buy Sometimes. some really good stuff, though. Depends <laughs> on what it is. The best things in life with are money. free, but it can certainly help you with your happiness. <laughs> true. You take some of the stress away. Money can't buy your happiness, um, but you're really happy when you have a lot of money. That's like, people right. People leave out that second part. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm just kidding, guys. Yeah, Don't no, so I really, like, really, yeah, I, I really grew up literally under my father's piano. Like, my mother talks about how I play? was in the little... I don't. You don't play really anymore. I read music. I used to play the piano. You're being but modest. I, so tell him who your dad was. Well, I mean, you can look him up. I don't he know. He was a, a maestro Ulf Björlin oh, uh, from wow. Sweden. And um, well, he passed away in 93 of leukemia. Oh, my gosh. I'm uh, so but sorry. But he was um, a world-renowned composer and conductor. And he did film and television scoring as well. And uh, yeah, my my mother was like, "Oh yeah, you guys used to just hang out under the piano while he played," and wow. so we just grew up. Obviously, that was the first influence. So he so was a big influence. He was for a you. very big yeah. influence. Um, Ninety three. So he it was that a late thing for leukemia because that I guess that can hit you sort of at any age. Yeah, I mean, he was sixty years old. Wow. Um, so my father have died at fifty nine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, who knows? We've come a long way. Yeah in cancer treatment he 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 probably would have made it yeah uh in this day and age which is now a great thing um well that's so interesting that that you had that that's so inspiring that you had that in the family and so did you is you must have that must have been where the opera came from and the classical for you right so i'm number five out of six kids and we all sort of just very naturally would just sing and dance and stuff at home and right. I have two brothers that are closer in age in proximity and we would kind of we just gravitated towards that naturally probably just because we heard it day and night and we right. kind of like formed our own little music group even and we started like choreographing stuff back then it was to like Madonna and Michael Jackson yeah. and whatnot like dancing right um, and then sort of like singing musical theater stuff but um yeah, so my first memory of like the first song I really learned was, I think I, in, in a way, I was actually kind of shy though at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I was in choir at school. In what, As like, we all were, right? right? All three in, like, of us were choir geeks. But I, but I, <laughs> we were hot choir geeks but though. I was, <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't, I was talking about being in the first grade. Um, and also, I'm originally from Sweden, so... Yeah, English when, is when your start, second language. English is by my the way. second language. So when I started oh, school, I didn't okay. speak English, and so I think that that was probably um, very what, terrifying. What year? what year did you come to? Uh, Nineteen eighty-seven. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, um, the end of eighty-seven, and I sort of had to start school right away, even though I don't didn't speak English, but just had to learn as I went along. And I mm-hmm. think that uh, just being in a whole new um, climate literally from stockholm to palm beach florida right. um wow was just it was very shocking <laughs> and daunting shock. and and um yeah big culture shock and i think uh, it was very introverted and kind of you know scared and, right uh so i was in a choir and i think the teacher sort of heard me singing and right i guess i didn't i didn't necessarily realize it was that any, you had a voice that i had yeah. a voice and then she came to me and gave me the song and said, could you take this home and have your father teach you how to sing this? And I was like, oh, okay. Well, Hmm. yeah, I don't know. I've never asked him that because I was still so young that like what 
my dad did was a completely de- separate thing from like me and my brothers goofing around. Right, and one of the things that <clears throat> you guys both have in common is that, well, obviously you sing and you act, but I think all three of us have very similar stories when we compare them yeah. and backgrounds of how we were discovered as singers or artists, but mm-hmm. it's very interesting because the two of you both sing classical music. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I grew up with classical music, even though I teach everyone pop rock now, So, but right. I grew up with opera. Yeah. And so it's, it's interesting that you know, and I, I don't know, Kyle, if I ever asked you about getting into classical music and, yeah, and why I, opera? Because I, you know, I th- we talked about, I was, you know, to, to start taking choir, I think started in like elementary school when every kid does it, you You're know, like and, the then, football and then over the course boy. of school, like from elementary to, to like middle to high, like, mm-hmm. you know, people start to, especially guys, like start to drop out um, in that group gets smaller and smaller, but I just stayed with it cause I just loved it. And now unlike, I'm like the polar opposite from Nadia. I do not, I'm the first person in my family to be in any kind of entertainment form. That would be me too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, I'm just kind of the, <laughs> not like people were, my parents used to be like, I don't, we, we don't understand this, you know, that world, like why yeah. does he not just have an interest, but he actually had kind of has a little bit of talent to go with it too. You know, where did this come from? Um, but yeah, so I, it wasn't until high school where, long story short, I, I was singing, they had like the big school choir, but then they had like, you know, a, a, a men's like group and then a women's right. group. And I was singing next to one, like a senior, I was a freshman in high school and I was standing next to um, a senior who was like, you know, in this private men's singing group or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and I was just singing alongside of him. And after class or the choir rehearsal, or whatever, he was kind of like, can you come with me? And he took me to the, you know, the director, you know, we choral all got director. called out into that little room. Can you come with me? And I was like, you know, am I going to get hazed? Like, yeah. what's going on? This is now a senior. Is, I don't know if you want to be. I'm a, and I'm a freshman. You don't like, want to go into a my, private room. Don't take with... me to the little room. <laughs> He's like, am I going to get my ass kicked? Like, what's going to happen? Yeah. But he took me into me with Dr. Renato Mario Vellutino, which he, be, he well, became my he became my mentor. But he was the choir director, and and you know, yeah. And this senior was like, Kyle's got a voice. Like, I, I, he should be part of our group. Because they're always cultivating. Because, you know, when you're a dude in high well, were school. Were you still playing football at the But that's the, the thing. I, I was literally just going to say yeah. this. So, like, you know, so I, knew I was. I too much about you. So I, I need was, to make sure I ask questions. I know. We can just pretend don't like you don't know, know any I'll of this shit. I don't okay. know you. So, no. So, <laughs> I. So, you know, I was playing football. And, and you know, a lot of guys didn't want, you know, to. They, they couldn't recruit very easily guys right. into this private guys singing group. You right. know, because guys were like, you know, I'm in high school, man. That guys don't sing. That's not cool. Right. You know, there's that. So yeah. they really, when they found a guy that, you know, could carry a tune or maybe a little bit more, they like jumped on that. And so I got invited to be a part of this, this, again, this private guys singing group or whatever. And that grew, started to grow my love of singing Mm -hmm. and then you know doc i won't say his full name again but i just called him doc he became my mentor and he privately coached me on the side and said you have something here that i want to cultivate right i didn't even know what i had i didn't know what it was you know i just knew that i loved to sing i grew up in new york and i grew up going to broadway shows and i you you landed in didn't you land in new york i yeah uh, by 16 i landed in new york and finished high school there and because, uh, well, I'm skipping all the rest of my childhood now, but... Um, no, but it, 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 it yeah. grew my, yeah. you know, interest. I saw my first Broadway show when I was, um, I think I was like in third grade or something mm-hmm. like that. I was like nine. Wow, that's uh, I was Phantom of the Opera. Then I saw like Les Mis after that. And then like my parents would take me and my brothers to go see Broadway shows and like that. I just started to... And I, like I loved sports and then i also loved theater you got fit and, you know not, and then and then when i got old enough exclusive with my yeah. own exactly and I, I got my own money and i would get on the train in high school and go down to manhattan and go to tkts for half price tickets and and with my lifeguarding money that i made and i'd buy just by myself and i'd buy right. a broadway show ticket and and it cultivated my love for that while i was getting privately coached by doc and and then, so anyway, to get back to your question, he was he was a former famous Italian opera singer. So he trained me classically in opera. Yeah. So I didn't learn musical theater or like pop rock first. I learned like Italian 
you know, arias. What, 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 what I did know? at Chapman, you had to learn, I couldn't speak in them, but we had to sing in seven letters. I didn't know what right, I was right, singing yeah. about, yeah. but I was <laughs> singing in Italian. So it and, sounds good. And so my transition went, so I'll just cap this off. My transition went from classically yeah, trained up, opera <laughs> to musical theater. Right. And then, you know, probably get to this later, but then you train me rock for rock of ages. Yeah, which, we are going to get to all that. I'm just saying, way. but yeah. that's, that was my, my progression. I love that. I love that. Cause every time I interview people, even though I know them very well and I train mm. most of them, um, I still find out so much about their lives that I didn't know. Um, you know, we had one of my mm. clients on, I didn't know that she wrote one of the biggest songs on the radio for, for Dua Lipa. I'm like, really? You wrote that? You wrote that? <laughs> uh, wow. That's amazing. Wow. That's really my cool. My whole team's <laughs> laughing at me because they like, all did the research, you know? They're like, it's in the notes. <laughs> it's in the notes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so when you guys, so Kyle, you left New York and then Nadia, what age were you when you left New York and came to California? Uh, 19. Well, so it, it, it started off the classical music and then very quickly loved, well, I loved, I always liked show tunes in yeah. general. Like I wasn't quite sure what musical genre I wanted to end up in. I That's just tough. sort of really found a mm. love for a little bit of everything. Um, but it was predominantly classical. And then one point point I decided I wanted to leave Florida and go to New York mm -hmm. and keep singing and I thought hey um I might join an opera company did you think that or, was you, what, what you were gonna do I yeah at one point I did mm -hmm. think that yeah I, I was really I really strongly felt that way but then also I was like but if I'm in New York, I could also maybe try out the whole Broadway right. circuit kind of thing. Because they're very different. But they're both very di equally yeah. difficult for yeah. different reasons. Yeah. yeah, and then I think there was a point though where I was like, oh yeah, I don't think I want to stick with the classical music mm -hmm. um, because I don't want to go to a, at a certain point I was like, go to a conservatory mm -hmm. for that. I just, something's telling me that that's not really my mm. path. Right. Um, it's a tough life. Yeah, because well, because my younger brother went that path. It was funny because we would perform together. Interesting. Um, and he sort of decided, like, mm, no, this is for me. So it's interesting how you. It's interesting because when I w went to I went to we Syracuse grew up in University, the same house. and it was like when I, you know, I got accepted into like the drama department and then the vocal performance program. And when I was kind of doing some research or talking to people, people were like the whole vocal performance opera thing is like, I didn't want any part of that. <laughs> you know what right, I mean? That, that right. was like, like you were saying, the conservatory, you know, it was, it just didn't seem, you know, I didn't have the confidence in myself as like an operatic tenor at that point in time to well, say, you know what, I mean? yeah. I'm going to go do that, yeah. you know? So I chickened out and went the musical theater drama route. Well, it's but. very different. I always tell people that, you know, sort of like even Andrea Bocelli, there's a difference between a Josh Groban and an Andrea Bocelli mm, yeah. to Pavarotti and oh, absolutely. Um, oh, God, to Domingo. Yeah. You know, they w w people that know music and know classical music, yeah. they can't even really touch each other. No, right? it's, it's right. very different. You yeah. know, very, very different. It's very, very difficult. So um, I'm wondering, question for both of yeah. you, when you knew, because Kyle, I think I knew you sort of fell into acting. I actually um, did, you know, but I'll get into that. You go yeah. So Nadia did, cause I don't know that much about your background with that. And then how did you leave? In some way, I guess I, I guess I kind of, I feel like I, I think you of, more fell into it I than I did. I kind of fell in. I had a very strategic acting. plan. Oh, you did. <laughs> I okay. did. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have that kind of a plan. I think it was just sort of this natural progression of where I was doing so much music at home right. and really with my family. And I felt very confident in that. And I sort of had that. Um, and then I started going to these performance like magnet schools mm -hmm. and I was like, well, in some ways maybe it's that I was like, I'm not necessarily being challenged in the music. I want to be challenged in something else. And so I started doing. Cause it came doing, easy to you. Cause it came I easy. I totally get that. Yeah, so yeah. I kind of then was like, oh, I'm going to do something that scares me, which yeah. is the acting. Right. Like strangely enough being in front of people even to this day like i'm not super comfortable being in front of a lot of people knowing that they are looking at me yeah um and so i felt like i wanted to take classes doing that and so it sort of then so it sort of progressed into that and then i went to 
interlocking arts camp Course. during the summers and then it was <laughs> like one does. didn't so we didn't go to interlocking <laughs> right? <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, laughs> <yeah, yeah, laughs> so I was doing the music but then I also our listeners sort of, are, I didn't mean to cut you off but our yeah. listeners might not know what that is but so Kyle what is it tell no, us no, go ahead, you well, it's south yeah. of Traverse yeah. City in Michigan yeah. Yeah. and it's an amazing it's place like band camp it's a <laughs> band, it's it's band camp for singers yes and my brothers went there as well but they went full on music they went full on instrumental Oh wow! Um, my younger brother went instrumental, and then he started singing as well because he's a genius. But yeah, yeah. Know, he then went and got his master's at Juilliard, and of course, as, as one, one does. does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in stereo. As I was going to do that, but I was like, eh, yeah, my younger I'm brother. By the way, he was strictly <laughs> instrumental. Like he played the French horn, and then he became a concert pianist even though he would probably say now like oh i'm not as good as a concert pianist yes he is Amazing. and then he sort of he fell he fell into the singing actually at band camp because i asked mm-hmm. him to come sing and funny one of those like madrigal choir like the small the small elite group of singers <laughs> and we needed a, a, a somebody who could sing bass and my brother was going through yeah. the stage of puberty <laughs> right right <laughs> with right. voice like <laughs> dropped below normal we're, 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 like, below normal. we're <laughs> like hey you like you can sight read perfectly you perfect bitch Just, right and nobody else has a low voice at this nobody age, has a low voice so and you're you're hired. Like, he was yeah, like exactly. 12 yeah, yeah, he was yeah. like 12 i'm not kidding he was it's like the, my kids he was playing, 12 i was playing basketball we've got the five ten kid just all he does is stand under the basket yeah. and rebound. You it's know, like that works, it. yeah. right? And then he developed this love for it, and then it, within like two years was accepted to Juilliard. And wow, well, yeah. amazing! So very uh, musical family, yeah. very yeah. musical background. So you, so you guys both. Uh, so for listeners that don't know fell on two days of our lives at quite yeah. a young age yeah yeah so how i fell into it then uh, as i'm just rambling here uh was i moved to new york it was like oh, okay i'm gonna finish up high school i think i want to go audition for this broadway thing mm-hmm. um when i moved to new york i i got a modeling agent mm-hmm. and just sort of fell into that as well and then i remember being at my modeling agency there was a talent agent across the hall who you're like yeah what some, why not well, I, some guy <laughs> c- c- came running out and he had he had these sides in his hand he's like hey you do you act and i was like yeah sure yeah right. totally Fake until you make it and, well yeah and he, and he was like you? i've got this Everybody like does. he has this breakdown for this character on all my children that they're okay. looking for this role can i send you in for this and i was like yeah sure i was not even 17 at the time i hadn't really watched soaps to be frank and I went. Who did at seventeen? I, mean, I well, did. Well, no, a lot of that's people. That's true. Do. What am I talking yeah, about? Well, no, no, I didn't. I didn't I, wait, I didn't watch him at seventeen, but I remember like, people grow up watching. Back that's from, true. That is true. When I came back, sorry, from, we're <laughs> off topic. I just that, I don't know why I said that. It's actually but, completely but false. Did, because when I came back from England, I had to, I was nineteen eight. It was 1980, 1981. I remember we had four channel. We had BBC One, BBC Two, BBC Three, right. and I think so there's Channel nothing Four. To watch. There's nothing. Yeah, no, that's, that's how I grew up in so, Sweden. There's like two channels on the right. TV, and the rest was like white snow. <laughs> and you came out here, and there's like I Dream a Genie. Yes, we're dating ourselves. I'm dating myself. Um, and they had and Days of Our Lives. Yeah, and, no, and I got true. into the world of soaps. Yeah. So yeah, as a teenager. Yeah. So I hadn't uh, really. I, I mean, I, I well, I, I knew the show, and actually, like, I had met Ruth Warwick as a child because she was in a production that my father had put on and she stayed in our house Mm -hmm. like um you know sort of like full circle Mm -hmm. moment where I'm like I'm auditioning for the show um I mean she was elderly at this point hadn't Mm. passed away um uh so I screen tested with Mark Consuelos oh wow well that's that's not nerve-wracking at all right not at all (laughs) you're like super hot I had no idea I had no idea what I was doing (laughs) (laughs) what are my lines (laughs) you're like 17 Uh, yeah barely I was like (laughs) not okay I don't know try to try to look (laughs) sexy or something (laughs) try to look sexy that's hilarious oh well then apparently I did well, so they brought me back for another screen test with Kelly Ripa at the time. Oh, okay. Um, when she was on the show, and um, she's nice to look oh, at she, too. Oh, so yeah, and I mean they were both really lovely. Uh, I didn't get it. Well, yeah. nobody got it. So I at first, it was actually a really good lesson because I'd been told that they were going to offer me the role, and then they decided to sc- scrap the character. Yeah. Uh, like 
last which minute. happens right. a lot which yeah. was it was a great learning lesson because i was devastated yeah <laughs> oh uh, my god well, it, it kind of, well it's taught you very early on in this That's brutal very true. industry yeah. like very true you know it's not that easy and you're gonna hear no a million times it's, you, that's yeah. the thing. you're gonna hear no million, more than you but hear like yes. but you know, but people you know, need with, to realize that but like with soaps don't you don't you with soaps you you kind of get on and there's that thing of like oh my god am i ever gonna get off and do i even want to because I've watched a lot of people come through that full circle, yeah. and it's yeah. like it's a great. There's also job. the oh my god, am I going to stay on here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Do they like no, me? there's exactly that, there's all of that. that. Yeah, I it's think, a I constant think. anxiety attack, twenty four seven. So <laughs> it's so constant anxiety. So yeah, it, and I didn't get that, and then I remember I started. So then I started auditioning for like other TV shows, and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool yeah. in New York, and. Um, I auditioned for As the World Turns, didn't get that. Yeah. And then I was like, I think I'm not cut out for the soap thing. Maybe there's just something. And then right then, um, I got an audition for Days of Our Lives, yep. living in New York. And they were like, hey, you're an opera singer too, right? Uh, it was an agent who didn't know me. I'm like, yeah. And they go, well, they need a teenage opera singer for this. Uh, can you put yourself on tape? That's just that was ser- exactly ser- how I got serendipity, the right? Yeah, you exactly- sing on, on the, the show. I, there was a requirement yeah. that I had to sing opera yeah. with her. That's yeah, how I, I got the role. That. So I I'm had to sure, sing, I and that. I was like, oh, okay. Then they flew me out here for screen test, and I remember being like, oh, this is really cool, and oh, I really liked the people mm-hmm. there. That just the energy, everything about it felt so good, and I was like, oh, this is nice. I'm not gonna get this, but this was a nice experience. <laughs> Yeah, Boom. but 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 that's when you know when you're not wanting something too badly in life. Ooh, yeah. All of a sudden, it creeps up on you. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so then I and I that was on. I remember that was on a Wednesday. I flew back on a Friday night. I got a call saying like, "You got it." And I was like, "What?" So you like, flew because it. Yeah. You've, it's always shot in LA. LA yeah, it's always always so I had to relocate. I had to move. I had to move in a weekend. Yeah, I had to be out insane. here on a Monday, and this was Friday night, and I was just so. How many a years kid. has that been now? That's been that was the end of '99. Wow! So in October of this year, it'll be 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, but what a great, crazy what a gift though. Yeah, totally, no, it, what a gift. Totally. Yeah, yeah, no, it was unbelievable because it was right when I had graduated high school, and I made the crazy leap of faith that I wasn't gonna go to college. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I left college. And I, and I, you dropped out, right? To come here. Took a leave of absence. See, took a leave of absence. Sorry, guys. That was a little harsh. (laughs) (laughs) He's a dropout. I mean, I didn't. (laughs) That's fine. No, I was as if, yeah, I I spent my entire freshman year I decided to not even go. But thank God you did. No, no, I'm just saying. I'm I'm just kidding. But it's, um, yeah, I spent my entire freshman year there. And I just kind of, during the the, the summer between freshman and sophomore year, I I can't explain it. You just, it was an intuition thing maybe where I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't want to go back. Is. I don't want to mm-hmm. go back. I, I, I want to go to LA. I was like, I grew up in New York. I don't want to forge an acting career in New York for some reason. I, for some reason, everything I said before, which was true about well, musical that was theater crazy, and, but and whatnot, it worked out. Right? I was exactly. like, I, 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 I didn't want to do theater all of a sudden. I was like, I, I want to move to LA. I just, I don't know. I can't describe it. It I was, was a like, calling. I felt the, call- felt the drive. You would have never met me. No. Thank <laughs> exactly. God exactly. I moved to LA. No, but I, I packed up my car and I literally drove cross. I was cliche. I drove cross country from New York to LA. Wow. And I got here and kind of like you, like I got a modeling agent when I was here and started booking campaigns and I, and I remember seeing some of those pictures. Yeah, thank God. You can't find those on the internet anymore. If they're too I, saw, old. I saw some of those too. You should, um, you should plant those on the internet. You should. They it would be good. so great. It's like Put pedophilia at this point. I'm like 19. No, you were... I, okay, yes. I haven't seen those photos it's, in a long time. It was Speedo time. and Abercrombie and Fitch, so I'm, needless to say, I'm not wearing any clothing in right. either one of these Oh, I, maybe I haven't seen those photos. I mean, maybe I need to see those photos. You should be proud that you were in a Speedo campaign in Abercrombie and Fitch. I mean, they're not they are not exactly putting... They, they, don't, they don't put, you know, chumps on there. Right? Look, <laughs> I had it at the time. Flaunt it if you had it. You're right. Yeah, I just need... Exactly. I, I, hey. I, I, I got approached. I, I was very grateful for that. Hey, if but I had it now, I would totally flaunt it. But you said something but, earlier that, that reminded <laughs> me about the no getting something because you take all the pressure off. That's how I got days because Days yeah. of Our Lives was my very first professional audition ever. You're like, oh, I'm just working and I was it like, out. I got the, ro- you know, I got the audition, and I'm kind of like, look, it's my first audition ever. I'm, 
I'm, this will be a learning experience. You got it. What? The Basically, Kyle off. was clueless, and so that's why he got it, because he was just like, whatever, whatever. Funny how I'm still clueless 20 years later. I don't know how I'm that happened. I'm clueless. Happens. I'm not going to get it. So, But I'm no, but that's what it was. It was no yeah. pressure. I said, I'm just going to go, and it's going to be a learning experience. I rode with Fran Bascom, God rest her soul, the casting director, you know, legendary casting director for days, and like read with her, and she was like, oh, oh, dear. Oh, and she was like the old, and she was like, this is exciting. You know, we want to bring you in for a screen test. And then that's where we met for the first time. Wow. I, How time yeah. flies, right? But they were like, I remember but, meeting her because I was put on tape in New York and they flew me out here and I went in to meet her and she was like, oh, dear, you're very tall. I didn't realize how tall you were. <laughs> Actually, that's a great... Dear. So they, in a way, I guess it was a good thing that they didn't meet me initially because she was afraid that I, that I was too tall. This, that's a great point. <laughs> My, the breakdown for this role of Brady was so specific they were like needs to be they they want like a like a like a blonde hair blue eyed or like at least kind of like a lighter hair lighter eyed guy mm-hmm. he needed to be over six feet tall because mm-hmm. Nadia's tall Boom. Boom. and then they're like and he needs to be able to sing classical music because tom langan was the head writer at the time serendipity and, so and i was like i was like wait a minute you know this is yeah. it's you know this is written for me well it was i didn't say that but I was, I was like, okay, this is really yeah. working out. But. So Kyle, you played Brady Black, yes, right? And Chloe, you played Cl- or Clo- Chloe, Chloe Lane. 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 So See, Nadia, you know, See? you know me so well as Chloe. You Chloe, just called me Chloe. Yeah. It's 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 that Freudian slip when yeah. you know yeah. someone on the show. So oh, it was yeah. Chloe, Chloe Lane, Lane, and I've had four other last names there probably just marrying different marrying people different on the show different people, multiple yeah. partners yeah. Right. as we do on soap <laughs> operas but you guys have you have sustained because you know we've lo- lost so many the fall of soap operas with um so with internet and, and all and, yeah. and streaming it's just, yeah, and it's constantly evolving the industry and you have to sort of go with it or you know yeah that's the thing you, you have to evolve yeah, yeah. absolutely but i think days have has done that they you know have. they're trying to re- constantly reinvent themselves well they brought and, me, that's why they brought me back as a new character this time because you left yeah. and now you're and then back went to bold and the beautiful for a while and then i you know went vegas Touring and new york and, and so then we back have to, to la we have to talk about that we'll get into that so yeah, yeah. that's so so amazing i want to go between the acting and the yeah, singing yeah. for you guys um kyle now that you mentioned that so you released a compilation album in 2011, yeah. right? It was like a classical I'll crossover. I'll make a long story short. So Be- I remember Bo- when Bold you and Beautiful is that. in the Guinness Book of World Records is like the most watched daily drama in the world. So I say that because it's, it's so popular internationally. Right. And then when I started airing internationally, um, you know, I started to get more well known. You know, particularly in Italy, that's the that's where I'm going with right. this. I remember is that when you went there. The, you the say, show is is yeah. a is a prime time smash in Italy. B and B, bold and beautiful. You so, finally called me up. You're like, oh my god, I need a warm up. I'm freaking out. Yeah, well, I'm singing on this like nationally. Yeah, we'll get to that. But just, so I got contacted. You're an athlete, Kyle. You need to by, train. <laughs> it's very right? true. You're so lazy. That's very true as well. So no, I I got contacted by a Italian composer. Yeah. I'll make a long story short here. I'm trying. So and and he basically had a, had a library hey, of original up, music, and needed a vocalist. Because yeah. he wanted to release this this album, you know, with yeah. his music, but he needed a vocalist, and he contacted me, and that's cool. And I flew to, or he, you know, they they took care of me. They they flew me to Florence. We recorded the album in Florence. It was all in Italian. Yeah, recording it in this like old I castle go to studio Florence and record an album. Right? I know. It, was, it was amazing. How and special. Then, yeah. Yeah. It was no. I, I don't. I didn't take a day of it for granted. It was surreal. I was in this old castle recording studio in Florence, and the, and then, you know, on the side of that, like they they treated me again. Did not take this for granted. They treated me like so well. Like I got to go see, you know, to academia and see the statue of David. Like I got to cut the line and take pictures of it. You know, not you're not, not allowed. To, I was able to. I had a private tour of the Vatican when I went to Rome and like got to take pictures of the sister tap chapel ceiling and mm-hmm. i say all this because it was like i was like is this my life it was so incredible yeah um and i got to, to like then i did the tv shows in milan promoting mm-hmm. the album um it was like their version of american idol and that's when i came to you and it said valerie i need help because mm-hmm. they wanted me to sing time to say goodbye you know conte partito didn't, didn't we, we we duetted that together we in did studio we did we yeah, did but fun. anyway so i was like i had actually never sung that song before yeah. and i was like then you, it starts to come in. I'm going to sing this famous Italian song yeah. in Italian in Italy, in, French of Italian. in front of you know a massive audience, but also like in a two night two night concert, yeah. and then also like nationally televised to millions of other Italians. I was like, 
this will either make me or end me. People are going to go, his Italian is terrible. And I, that's, <laughs> right? So I called you up and I was like, I need help. And you're like, okay, we can work on this. When are you going? I'm like, next week. You're like, Kyle. I know. Last minute. So, I know my clients always do that. They anyways, have an so audition. <laughs> last minute. But we release it on iTunes and I'll cap it with it. We release it on iTunes and it was, it was very humbling. It did so well yeah. internationally in america they're kind of like oh we're not really into this music like if you're a fan of andre bocelli or josh groban then you were down with it mm -hmm. but but or that style of that classical crossover style well, you have a, you've always you know no but in italy they, they ate it up or internationally i should say they you have up. a tone you have a certain tone as a singer and i always tell my clients you know we don't want you to lose that tone mm. that tone is what makes you special whether you're singing rock or pop or death metal or you know classical music we want to just make you bionic you know you never as a teacher you never want to take away the, that tone of your voice yeah. and you've always had that sort of I mean not to compare you to a Josh but just sort of that lower baritone mm. that warmth in your voice no you never tried to change that me no a doubt. you just we wanted to expand and make sure that you weren't hiccuping on all your bridges and you know people <laughs> didn't know when you were switching gears <laughs> which was a serious issue mm -hmm. but we digress <laughs> but we digress so um and then Nadia you performed with your brothers in a trio so yes. Well, we sort of formed this trio when we were kids, mm -hmm. um, and it, we we sort of did the sort of Von Trapp family thing. But really, it was it your we, father's musicals? Is that no? It was we we started singing. Well, yes. Okay. We yes we did do some of our father's music. Right. But we then <clears> started <throat> doing like the Sound of Music mm -hmm. and all kinds of other show tunes and we sort of created our own little band well, you were like the swedish von trapp family though that's why that really <laughs> worked if you think about um, it <laughs> we kind of created our little like you know classical crossover everything whatever we felt like doing band and we we booked our own gigs that we did wow. like yeah. in elementary well and not elementary middle school and then beginning of high school and we were sort of full-fledged putting on like little concerts or, <laughs> or we were cool. hired. I always say that like, I've never really had a real job, but I was a wedding singer. So weren't we all and me, you know, so we like, we did weddings. We did, we did weddings. We did bar mitzvahs. We did whatever you wanted us to do. We, we sang, <laughs> we sang in hotels. It's like when you're, you, you, you guys have had that experience. You're at a party as a, as a singer and somebody wants you to sing. You're like, you know, I'm not doing that. They're like, oh, I karaoke eat bars. Yeah. I want to eat Kyle, my food. Kyle, you're a singer. Get up there and yeah. sing. And I was like, no, no. Yeah, that's so funny. Sorry. I've never been a fan of karaoke either. Like karaoke no. bars are... No, I, I don't mind listening to it's other people. It's better but when you are like a bad singer singing at a karaoke it's bar. Funnier. It's more fun. There's nothing more right. inappropriate than like an actual like singer getting it's up really, there it's really and like taking it all seriously in right. front of the microphone. Yeah, so like, and also like people it's expect like, you <laughs> yeah. to, you know, I don't know. Or like I'm always, you turn into the wedding singer. I'm You're also like the not actual sober wedding at a karaoke yeah. bar. Okay. So <laughs> like I'm not, I'm too protective of my performance at that point. I'm not going to set myself up to fail. I, like oh my I, god listen i was like I totally there's a high a in that song i can't sing that tonight <laughs> i'm drunk damn it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh that's hysterical I, I love that you guys are both uh, you have that background because it makes you be able to jump in other entertainment aspects of your life yeah. you know and it probably help you prepare for for i think you know, live days i think that's great but i think for me hum like mm -hmm. personally and humbly i think that live growing up in live theater or singing or very the, those are the most vulnerable aspects i think of our business the entertainment business that has opened me up in terms of like being more media savvy interview savvy you know being comfortable not in front me of, <laughs> You're not well, exactly okay. shitting the bed right now either. <laughs> you you can't when, when when those things come up, you you have to go with the mistakes. Yeah. You know, you yeah. can't not fix it. I had somebody tell me this morning who we just did a show together, um, and he called. Uh, it's like it's I can't talk about it yet. So ooh, that might have been a major gaffe. But anyway, he's uh, sings in the show, and it sets um, place in the '60s, and he's now auditioning for another Broadway musical, and he almost said to me, "Oh, I'm not going to do it." And he's not a trained singer, but he's got a lot of bass talent. Mm. And I said, listen, this is, it's going to be the film too. We can fix this. We can fix it in post. And not that you want us to do it, but we can do that. We can float mm. choruses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can melodyne if we have to. Yeah, um, absolutely. Not loving it, but we can tune a little bit. When you're live, it's go time. Oh, there's no time. safety net. No, it's yeah. go time. 
When you're like yeah. coming to the end, like a high note at the end of a song and you know that you're not 100%, yeah. Yeah. there's not a more terrifying, I'd rather be thrown off a bridge. Well, like you it's, have it's, to have your skills though. You have to understand. You're like, just like, you know, that's coming and you're like, I don't have it tonight. It, it's terrifying, but you've got to make it work. So I think to your point, you get into this mindset of, I got to make it work. Yeah. So when you get, when you reverse it and then you, then you start doing screen work, mm -hmm. it's, it's not that it's easier. I don't want to say that, but, but it's, 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 it's you know, it's, it's, different. it's different where I don't, you know, I've never had a problem, you know, going on the fly. Like if right. I'm on, you know, on, on screen, like we're doing right. a scene or something on the show and I know that I'm going to go up on a line. I'm saying lines and I know that like four lines from now, like I forgot it. I can, <laughs> and I have to do that so many times on stage at live theater that even right. on camera, like I, I can improvise that as but opposed moving, to going like, I forgot. Moving into you know? that though, I would be remiss if we didn't bring up uh, Vegas yeah. because yes. you, you went from, well, you saved me with that because I had to sing eighties rock anthems in right. a register that I couldn't even think in. Yeah. So for How the many shows that, a week, eight, eight yeah. shows a between week. seven and eight. Yeah. I'm interested. What was that? So, like? so Kyle, for the listeners that don't know, you can tell them. I played Stacy Jacks, Jacks in right? the original Las Vegas company of rock. The Broadway show rock of ages opened the original Las Vegas company. And mm -hmm. I originated that company as Stacy Jacks. And, and you know the, 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 the hilarious sing. no, yeah, no the, the, I had all. to sing and I was surrounded mind you with people that could sing this stuff they right. were actual like rock singers they, they actually pop trained singers, all the time you know and, and <laughs> they actually were Kyle good would just phone, but he'd just give me a phone call every now and then Valley, I need to. Uh, yeah, I need to have a thirty-minute lesson. I have since kicked that habit. Um, <laughs> he has. He I has. Was, I was gonna say, yeah, you it, used it, to literally, it, right? It, well, I'd literally be like, you know, with like a glass of wine and cigarette, going like, why is my voice not coming back? I, know, I don't so, understand. So, this. so guys, Kyle, Kyle's a bit of a hedonist, but we love him for that. So, I've, he's, yes, I've, he's starting to, to to reel it in. I have in, nothing in the to older hide. I've, I've quit yeah. that habit. I should have quit it a long time ago. But I, I've actually been cigarette-free for for. I know. I'm so proud of you. A long years Yay. ago. Anyway, but the point is, yes, I wasn't doing myself any favors at the time. But, but you made it through, and we, you, we we Skype. But I got to give you some fine. credit because I came to you and I said, "Look, I just got." Because here's the thing: I could sing. My audition song was "Wanted Dead or Alive" by Bon Jovi. Yeah, I could I sing that. that song, right? Like that. I could do that. So I was able to fraudulently wake, make my way into that show, right. <laughs> singing that, like blasting that song in the audition, and then doing you know the 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 sides you know the acting part of it yeah and i got the role and <laughs> then like, you have that what? moment where you're like <laughs> i'm a fraud because yeah. i you get the score and you're like oh there's a song by white snake and journey and yeah. you know what i mean and but you're like you did it we made it through but my point right? is you you said this earlier that i want to touch upon you said okay if I try to change your voice, then you're going to lose your voice. Right. We got to keep your instrument mm -hmm. and figure out how to just break through into your upper, you know, upper, upper register. So you're not, you know, you know, vocal speak. You're, you're well, not it's currency. Pushing, it's vocal currency. You know, you and that it. is what saved me. I never, the only show I ever missed in the entire year there was because I was in a motorcycle accident. Right. I remember that. It was that. never, Ooh. which was not my fault, by the way. Just for the record. For yes. the record. Anyway, the point is, is that I never miss a show doing due to vocal problems. Right, and that's what that's what staying plugged in does. That's yeah. what training does. You know, for the right singer, the right teacher. It was rough though, like the rehearsal process. I, I'm, I'm not going to be self righteous about it. You know, there were many times that me and like our music director and whatnot were like, "Are you cool? Can you do this?" And I'm like, "Here's the thing, I will do this because I've always been that type of person. I will mm -hmm. find a way." Mm -hmm. And I did. You did. But it was not without you know like. Is this, am I going to have egg on my face? You know it's what I mean? It's called adrenaline and fear. Because <laughs> I can hit, you know, I can go yeah. a high B flat right. classically. Mm -hmm. I can ring that up there. Right. Can I rock scream it? Right. No. Yeah. Well, it's a different, that. it's a different mix. Absolutely. It's less air. It's more muscle, Absolutely. but in a mix, but not also in a you, pulled chest. A lot of the times I was singing in a mix in that show and people didn't even know it. But you don't want to know. Well, that's, that was the beauty of it. I yeah. didn't know that before. You want people to go, wow, he's got such yeah. a huge chest voice. And we're sitting there going, it's not chest. It's not chest. He's not belting that. Yeah. So, so that was a, that was a huge role for you. Huge. Yeah. And, um, you have now gone from that to producing a show called ladies of the lake well that's so just that which i went Nadia, to new york you for, have you guest start on you that guest start well, on. i did like a little 
a tiny little thing. Yeah, but we needed you in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We needed you in there. It was hilarious, yeah. her part. But um, it was written for her. They were like, we need to do a couple of really fun cameos in the second mm -hmm. season right. um, of it. And I was like, dude, we got to get Nadia in this somehow, some way. Yeah. So we got her in it. Um, so, you know, the, the, the career has been long and good to both of you, you know, oh, and yeah, I'm yeah. sure people who watch the show and watch Days of Our Lives know you as those characters, but they never really get to sit down and hear the other side of things and what no. your passions are and how you were raised. And um, I think everybody will find that incredibly interesting. So I, yeah. to, so to tap on top of that, I want to find out what the goals for 2019 are. Nadia, let's yes. start with you. Oh, wow. Um, now That's you're a, a mother, good... you're, you've got two little ones at home, so... Yeah, I mean, the goals for 2019 are to stay sane. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good first, one. First and foremost... That is my perpetual goal. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. since Every becoming day. a mother, like, I mean, the outlook on life changes. It's very it humbling, and the it things is. that seemed important before are not... It takes you off of yourself. I will agree with that. Yes, like, any selfishness, yeah. any of that, like hyper awareness I guess you could see, completely goes away and anxiety kind of melts away because you don't have time for anything else but your your kids it's you also like anytime wallow. like self-loathing yeah. comes in you just look at like how bright-eyed and bushy-tailed your kid is and you're like I want to see the world through that through, their through, eyes. The, through those yeah. eyes yeah yeah it's it's incredible no, it's so true it, it actually helps you slow down in a mm -hmm. way maybe that's in some ways like slowing down some parts of my life yeah is, a nice goal to have Just being yeah. in the moment being in the moment mm -hmm. and really spending time with my kids and really seeing the world through their eyes is very cool like yeah. seeing them yeah. discover things for the first time and that yeah. is really that amazing you, like kind of take for granted like once you grow up and you sort of right. lose that and Kyle, I know you Sweetness. speaking on top of that, yeah. what Nadia just said that you, um, you know, I know your daughter Izzy really yeah, well. well. Watching her very grow well. into this young lady, yeah. you know, is pretty, pretty cool. It is very um, cool. And being a parent, you know, just being yeah. a parent is, is one of the most leveling things on the planet. And it really does. If you're an artist, um, you know, th there is a, it is a good way to balance you and balance you out. So goals besides... <laughs> Yeah, you know, 2019. Goals, well, I have. Kyle. I can't talk about that. We're still. We're the press release has to come out first, but um, we are in production right now. On so I have a production company with um, Michael and Barbara Caruso that we did Ladies of the Lake together, mm -hmm. and we realized you know after we we got nominated for an Emmy Award for the first season, and then the second season was such a success on Amazon, and we're like what's next for us? And people are asking, you know, we have financiers saying, you know, what are other projects you have going mm -hmm. on? And so uh, we're in production right now on a Christmas film. Oh, cool. That will come out this holiday season. Mm -hmm. And it's probably going to, by the time this airs, it'll be out in the public, mm -hmm. but I, I can't say it yet. You can't talk about it. But it's, I know, uh, yeah, I get so it. We're, we go, we sh we're shooting that over the summer. Um, Great. And then um, that's going to be released this holiday season. So I'm literally leaving here and going our production office is downtown so so where can our audience find you kyle uh at kyle louder 22 on both twitter and instagram awesome. i am not on facebook i know i'm not either I don't know. no no nothing wrong with facebook Love but i facebook, just I, yeah. I twitter and instagram are all i it's just fast all yeah. i can handle fast. all i can handle yeah, yeah nadia what about you where can your audience uh, find you well i'm st i'm still on days of our lives as yeah. of this moment um but yeah on instagram and twitter as well Great. Awesome. Um, Though my Instagram and Twitter names are different, and it's because why I, would you do something? Like I don't. That? I don't know why. Well, no. This, okay, I'm going to try <laughs> to make this long story you. short as well, <laughs> because I had not signed on to any social media back when it first started. <laughs> like when Twitter came out, I didn't sign up, and then someone was like, "You're on Twitter, right?" Like, so, right. I think somebody, so. Somebody <laughs> signed up. Uh, the handle was at Nadia Bjorland, pretending to be me and being like really vile to people. Oh no! Like, Happened to really, me too. Being like <laughs> yeah. really awful. That's, that's why we get those blue checks now. But the, the, like the verified oh, check geez. mark, yeah. So it was a person pretending, and like you went and looked at the timeline. It was like I'm at Starbucks, headed to work at Days, and I was like, this crazy person that's is. That's really you. scary. So I then signed up to Twitter, and I couldn't get my own name. Yeah. They. What so, are you on Twitter? I, so I'm I follow real, you. I'm a real Nadia B. And I'm okay. like, I, it took three oh, seconds okay. to come up with that. And I was like, real Nadia B. I didn't realize how much of a force Twitter was even going to become. Like, right. But you're Nadia B. You're on Instagram. And though. I'm Nadia B. Oh, okay. on Instagram. It's just really funny but having I, this conversation. I couldn't have now. Kyle Lauder like, on Twitter and Instagram because somebody already took them. 
That's why you're 22. But someone was like, uh, you yeah. should have just put like real Nadia B on Instagram. I was like, I. It's like, didn't. can I have I... my own name? Why does this fake person have my name? Like, why are you? <laughs> yeah. Why are you? Why are you allowing them to keep this fraudulent account? Like, it's just it's so it's it's infuriating. It's like your <laughs> it's your weird. biggest nightmare and your your biggest like blessing. Not only, they talking, died. not only are they talking to people as me <laughs> so in bizarre. bad like grammar, by the way, which is my huge pet peeve. It's like if you're gonna be me, at least spell correctly. Right, you can be correctly, <laughs> damn it. You can be nasty to people, but at least do it with God, right or at least be better at making fun of people. You're terrible. Yeah. Like, oh my god. Anyway, yeah. Now, guys, this can, has been. At least you can Google people now and find out what their handle is. Yeah. That is if you can spell Bjorlin. No, yeah. that's true. No, yeah. thank you for having this us. This has been by awesome. This has been awesome. I really love, I, I love having you guys on the show. I'm so proud of you. And and we didn't even get to talk about this, but five seconds. You, I've known you for almost 20 years, and I've watched your rise. And just good on you, baby. Thank you, really. Kyle. It's fun. Good We're all you. doing what we love, and yeah. that's what's important. So thank yeah. you for joining us and coming on Lipple. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for having us. And we just had the most amazing guests on, Kyle and Nadia. Yes, um, I've known Kyle forever. Yeah. It was so exciting. It's so exciting. And like right at the end, I'm like, what? He's doing a Christmas movie? Because I don't know whether he knows, but Christmas movies are like my jam. I watch them all year long. And so now we have to have him back. So in your brain, you're he like, can. he's got to come he's back and come talk back. about his Christmas. Yes. Yeah, I, I want to know, know that. I didn't know he was doing that. I'm like, Christmas is in the air He's already. full of surprises, that yes. guy. Forget Easter. We'll yeah. just do Christmas. Exactly. <laughs> so they were really fun. They were really fun together. Yeah. They've got yeah. all the tie-ins with the music. We have right. a lot of very sim- you know, similar Background. backgrounds being in you know, classical. Um, classical music and yeah. opera and all that. Yeah, I thought it was really fascinating because a lot of artists a lot of actors you know you know you hear them coming from pop music backgrounds and wanting to do that so I love that they really embraced the classical and kind of did a bit of crossover with Broadway right um, that was that was all really really fun and and obviously Rock of Ages which was huge um, and for Kyle, Kyle. You yeah know, giving that shout out to you on that because I mean you really guided him through that well, he um, made it. He made it through yeah. all those shows. And that was really a testament to, um, you know, just sheer, sheer will, you know. But <laughs> like that was that was playing Stacey Jacks. That was a huge role for him. And I remember yeah. when he did that in Vegas. Mm-hmm. It was a big deal. A huge big so deal. So very proud of him. And I think, you know, it's a, a real testament to, for all artists to know, you know, stay plugged into your warm-ups. That's when you're the doing key. These things, yeah, that's, that's key. the key. And stay plugged into what your vocal, do check-ins with your vocal coach, yeah. with you. Yeah, um, exactly. You with know. me, Valerie Morehouse. <laughs> <laughs> Here on the lip roll mic. <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, it was fun. It was it was really it was really good to to see the two of them together mm-hmm. because I've known yeah. Nadia for years through Kyle, but mm-hmm. I've never really been able to sit down and chat with her. So that was yeah. that was nice. Find out more about her. Exactly. And I will I do have to rib you on that whole social media breakdown. I'm like, how long? <laughs> how long are you guys going to I was trying talk? to steer it back, but I was like way <laughs> off track, you know. We've, but you know, maybe we'll like do the shortest social media plug for lip roll right now. It's like we've got YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Apple and Spotify. That's it. You subscribe. covered them all. <laughs> you got it. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, well thanks. Well. Thanks again. Absolutely. It was great, Val. Thanks. Bye.